Hey, what's up? Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, if you're new here, hi hello I'm Lydia and if you are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button to join the growing family. Aiming to reach 6.5k and when I do I'm doing a giveaway so that's your motivation to hit the subscribe button. So today I thought we could talk about the differences between private healthcare and NHS treatment in the community. I done a video like this where I compared psychiatric inpatient whether well, compared private to public, private was obviously the best. <laughs> so we'll start off with the NHS. The NHS has long waiting times nearly impossible to get in touch with anybody, you don't get believed, you get told you're attention seeking, trying to get drugs. And honestly it's just not fair how we're treated on the NHS. When I was, how old was I? I think I was 18. 20. When I was 20 I decided to take out private healthcare insurance because of mental illness and I used that to get private therapy. Now there was no waiting list. I got seen straight away. I was trying out for a EMDR therapy and to put it bluntly I was not ready for it emotionally. I just couldn't deal with it and that led to a massive decline in my mental health. I got hospitalised under NHS but I will say that the lack of waiting times helped a lot. On the NHS you're looking at two to five years on a waiting list which is outrageous. When I was private I literally called someone said hey do you have any availability and he said next day. Now I'm not going to go into how much it costs because it costs a lot of money and I was working at the time so I could afford to do it because I had student finance to live on. I use my wages to get private therapy. I had a private psychiatrist as well. Now the private psychiatrist was trying to get me off of the medication and thank you to him because I was on a lot. I was on two antipsychotics, mood stabiliser, three antidepressants, clonazepam, lorazepam, I was on topiclone. And yeah, I was just uh, medicated a lot by the NHS. And my psychiatrist, the private psychiatrist, took me off most of them. He had me with one antipsychotic, no mood stabiliser, one antidepressant, Lazapam and Lazapam PRN, and Zopicone. So it did very much so reduce my medication, and I'm grateful for that. Because that was a time I was over medicated. And I genuinely think the NHS just over medicates people who they don't want to deal with. <laughs> Man, I'm tired. I didn't even go to uni today. I felt ill. Ooh. That is in my head. Oh, oopsie. Note to self, stop spinning around on chair. Private healthcare was worth it for me. The only downside is I did have to pay for the therapy course of EMDR even though I wasn't completing it because I just, I couldn't do it. I wasn't I wasn't stable enough to do it. I have no problem admitting that. I was, I was unstable. I was struggling. A lot of you can probably remember when I lived in Wembley. That's quite, that's like five years ago now. I've lived in London for five years. That's crazy talk. Please. Let's never forget the two months live in Brighton. I lived in Brighton for two weeks <laughs> before I was sectioned. Would I go back to private treatment? Honestly, yes, I would. I think it's brilliant and I am considering taking out private health insurance that covers mental health because that's the cheapest way to do it. But yeah, that's all I've got for this video. Thank you for watching and if you're new, subscribe. Peace.